This lesson is going to be all about improving your playing through practice using specifically three tips that I'll go over through the course of this video. I think too many players, experienced players and inexperienced players, think of a guitar in their hands as nothing more than an opportunity to jam out. And maybe I'm a little bit biased here. I'll admit I've got a bit of an aversion to the term jam out. I'm not sure why. We don't have to be on the same page about that. But I want to go out on a limb here and say that more often than not, jam sessions just aren't conducive to the mindset of, I don't know, introspection that is so important in improving upon and advancing your playing style. Can jam sessions be fun? Sure, they can be fun, of course, and having fun while you play guitar is important, so don't mishear me about that. Can jam sessions be productive? Again, yes, they can be productive. That laid-back, fun feel uh, or that environment might allow you to explore your way musically into something really cool, cool that you'd never thought about before. But it's not the same as practice. Uh, I want to be very clear on that point. It is not the same as practice, and I think it's a mistake to confuse it as such. If, as a musician uh, or a member of a group, be that as the member of a garage band or as a hired gun or as a participant in something as simple as a jam session, if you want for what you bring to the table to hold value, then you're going to have to practice. And here... I'm going to be going through these three tips that I think will add to the value that you can give in those situations. Tip number one, practice like you're playing Minesweeper. And in case I just lost you on this Minesweeper reference for those of you who weren't uh, born in the 80s or so, uh, it's that... It's that old Windows PC game where you click around on the boxes and you try to avoid the bombs. And if you hit a bomb, it explodes. Minesweeper, the, the analogy here, my point is that Minesweeper does not reward mistakes by allowing the player to continue forward. And sometimes I think that our practice should reflect that same unforgiving scrutiny of expectation that Minesweeper demands of its players. Do you have to practice that way all the time? No, you don't. But I think it's going to be fair to, at times... Set aside chunks of time where you practice like you're playing Minesweeper. And here is specifically what I mean by that. Um, if you hit a wrong note while you're trying to learn something new, don't continue it. Stop it and start it over. Let me give you an example. One of the most difficult early riffs that I remember trying to figure out was What's My Age Again by Blink-182. As in... <laughs> That riff, I'm assuming maybe you recognize that riff. Well, for some reason, that was really difficult for me to get under my fingers. And what I would more often than not play would be this. Something along those lines where I would let, you know, improper notes sneak in. Now, if you're a young player, I can see where just getting it like the last way that I just played it, that might feel really rewarding. You may think, man, I'm doing it. It sounds just like it. And you may want to just let it ride. But that's an unhealthy approach to take. And whenever you practice like Minesweeper, I think what you should do is whenever you're trying to learn some new riff and you hit that wrong note, you just stop. And you keep doing it until you make yourself get it right. Because whenever you go out in public and you play this for somebody and you do the... It's going to be recognizable and people might say, yeah, man, you're doing it, you're playing it, it sounds just like them. They're lying to you. So set yourself up for whenever you are playing in front of people that what you have to show uh, is of quality and is impressive and is rehearsed. Like... That's the whole point whenever we play. That's the whole point of learning to play guitar, I think, is to play for people. So, you know, put yourself in a position where when you do play for people, you are playing something that is nice to listen to because it's correct. So practice like you're playing Minesweeper. Tip number... i got to pick in my hand. I can't make a number two. Tip number two, slow it down. Um, and maybe that sounds common sense to you, but that's my next tip for you is slow it down. As in, if you're trying to learn something new and it's just getting the best of you, slow it way down and try it that way. As a player, I find myself still getting extremely frustrated when a riff or a pattern does not come to me effortlessly. I think, geez, you've been doing this for 20 years. 
why can't you get it right? But it literally still happens to me all the time. And I find myself constantly going back to something from my first year of playing that I learned that was a huge help to getting a new part down under my fingers, and it's simply slow it down. Keep it in relative time, of, co of course, but just slow it way down tempo-wise. Let me give you an example. As I was becoming a slightly more um, experienced player, I went through this huge Dave Matthews phase and I wanted to learn how to play the song The Stone, as in... It's a Dave Matthews song you may or may not be familiar with, but either way, it's a, it's a very specific feel to that riff. Your fingers are doing very specific things, both on your left hand and a very specific picking strumming pattern with your right hand, and for the life of me, I could not get it down. So what I would do is I would spend, you know, sometimes this process takes 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. I don't know how long it takes for you. That's how long sometimes it takes for me of slowing it down and playing it note by note. You get the idea there. Playing it note by note, allowing it to sink into my fingers. And I would do this for, again, long periods of time and, and I would get frustrated thinking uh, it's not making any progress. I would set my guitar down and walk away. And one thing I've learned is that practice almost always leads to progress even if you don't see it in the moment. I think a lot of times with practice we're like uh, frogs boiling in water. If you're not familiar with the analogy, if you put a frog in water and set it to boil, the water gets hotter and hotter and hotter and the frog doesn't even realize it's happening because it's been in the moment the entire time. And I think that the same is true of our practicing. Um, so oftentimes what I would find after I had slowed it down and practiced it slow for a while and walked away from it whenever I came back, that muscle memory had had a moment to sink in and all of a sudden what I had practiced and rehearsed slowly had sunk in and it had become far more fluid and I could play it at speed if I wanted to. So I'm not saying that that works like magic every time for me or for you as you try it, but it is a, um, it's a tip that I think is worthwhile. Tip number three, learn familiar melodies by ear as a form of practice. And here you'd be practicing a couple of things. You'd be practicing actual mechanics of playing, but you'll also be practicing a very useful skill, which is learning to play by ear. I did a video a while back about uh, playing by ear where I offered some ideas on how to hone your ear. And this last tip builds off of that idea. So you should practice learning songs, like the melody of songs that you are familiar with by ear. Uh, the easiest way to do this is by picking well-known songs, and that's relative, of course. Something that's very well-known to me may not be known to you, but pick some song that is very well-known to you, and then hunt and peck for what the melody is on your guitar. I would suggest, as you start this out, to first learn it on one string. For instance, let's go with Joy to the World, and I don't know why my mind went to Christmas there, but uh, I assume that Joy to the World is probably a melody that we're all familiar with, like... There's more to that melody, but we're going to end it there for the sake of brevity. That is it on one string. And, you know, the first time that I figured that out, I had to hunt and peck for it a lot. But I've gotten to the point where I can play, play that melody on one string. I think it's a good idea for as you pick your melodies to practice. And this is, this is all practice. There's no point to just knowing all these melodies on guitar on one string. It's, it's a way to practice. As you pick what melodies you're going to go for, I would suggest learning it on one string and learning it such that you could play it multiple times in a row without messing up. And then once you get that down on your fingers, learn how to play it on three strings. So the exact same melody on three strings would be... And this is going to, be a t uh, this is going to do a couple of things for you. Number one, you're honing your ear. Um, you're honing your ear uh, by figuring out the melody. And number two... You're giving yourself a more intimate understanding of the relationship between the strings, the frets, and the notes that they create, which is an incredibly important skill to have on guitar. And what I suspect is that the more you do this, the quicker you'll find it, uh, or, or the quicker, quicker you will find yourself recognizing tones and patterns and chords and chord shapes when you hear them, which again is an extremely important skill to have on guitar.